In Cloud Administrator course, the last time we have done a project on Azure Infrastructure as a Service example, that's just to show you what it means in a practical way. We are going to cover Platform as a Service example, and that will be the last example in this chapter. Um, this is not to go into the app services in Azure, it is just to give you an example of PaaS. So let's get started with that. And just like the first video, if you have not watched the first example, make sure to watch that. And then this pass example will make more sense. So back in the days, or not back in the days, I would say on premises, because that's getting old now. So when people wanted you to access a website inside their company, they would have a server just like this. And in that server, whether it's a virtual server, physical server, they will have a web server, IIS or Apache or some other web server will be running. And then they will do a configuration, uh, a system administrator or engineer. And then basically they will uh, create a website where then uh, member staff or customers can then access that website through the internet. But the engineers were managing uh, basically that website under that web server. So it's like a on-premises access that engineer have to drive to the company or VPN into the company to manage it. Now, when we talk about app services, one of the example that I can give you is just related to the website. It can be used for many other purposes, but what happened is that with the cloud technology, now this part is gone. You don't have to be, actually your servers don't have to be running inside your company or physically be available there or virtual available the availability. All of that is gone. You can just go to the Microsoft and say, hey, you know, can I use your app services? You will just pay for it. Um, and basically you will just start using it. So if Microsoft data centers, we call it cloud, they have somewhere, I mean, we don't know where that is. They may have somewhere like servers one, two, three, four, and then that service might be running like, you know, in a replication method where your application or that service is being replicated in different regions. So that's very powerful stuff because now you don't have to rely on one company's connection and everything to run that website. You could actually run that website right from here. And then when this goes down, it will move to here. It will move to here and move to here. Are, and it has a lot more, uh, you know, security and many other features. And this is why this becomes a platform as a service. So now infrastructure is not with you, but that application side is with you, meaning you are still going to go inside this application and do the configuration, deploy the code, and you have that level of access, meaning you can get to the web config, you can get to a lot of that backend stuff. It's not just like a website, you go in there and say, what is the title of the website? No, you can actually go back and change everything you like to. You have all the control. So it's still not like an application like Microsoft Office 365, where it doesn't let you go back end and change the code of application. Here, you have that capability. That's why we call it platform as a service. Now, there are many other examples I would highly recommend you go and do more research, find more videos to find many other examples to get this understanding clear. So what we are going to do, we're going to create a simple application just to demonstrate what I just talked about in this uh, beautiful drawing that I just did. Don't laugh. Thank you. So for this example, I am going to use our own subscription, which we have already told you to get one for yourself for better learning. So you don't get any access issues. You can still use the practice lab access if you can really do these things. But I would not try to do that because maybe we may get stuck somewhere. So where do we where do we begin with when we comes to when we start doing um, app services type of uh, you know things and and in Microsoft uh, Azure it actually gives you an option so if you go to the main home page so if I just type home like there and if I just go here you see on the left side if you scroll down we have app services right here so before we covered virtual machines where you had that like you know that operating system level access right you could do a lot of things uh networking related stuff and many other things inside that virtual machine which kind of came under the iis um, infrastructure as a service this is app services so if you click on it you see uh, when we click on create this is all about app databases as well and you can even put a wordpress on app service so you could put a whole application all from scratch so if you do web app just like that 
this would be a web web application if it's a static app does not include a lot of things like databases and stuff like that then that you would pick this most likely a lot of time almost 90 percent if it's an application that serves a website like you have a customer that goes in and they have to log in they have to register and things like that they must have a database so that usually if somebody say we're going to move to the cloud 100 percent to the cloud we're going to move our website to the cloud they're going to have to actually use the database services in app service for that purpose and many people have done it already so basically we can create an app just by clicking on you know create an app it will ask you for the subscription here and resource group you can create a new one we're going to call it let's say website just like that and we'll click ok and then you see you have this name that it automatically gives you this uh, name right here which you can add your subdomain name and stuff like that but then later on you will have to change your dns if you have let's say a proper website then it will give you capabilities to change that from Azure websites to something which you have bought from whoever. So once we type the name, this is where then it will ask you for the runtime. This is like whichever application that you're going to use for your website, they have the capabilities to give you that. So we're going to, let's say, pick PHP and then uh, let's go down. And here we can run this on the Linux uh, side of it, or you can also run it on a different, uh, you know, environments if you would like to. But PHP is usually Linux, so that's why it's like automatically picked Linux. If I change to, let's for example, we change it to uh, .NET, it's going to change it to probably, um, let's see, Windows right there. So it depends on what type of application you are going to run. And this is, again, this is not going to be for a newcomer. This is going to be for somebody who knows what they're doing. Now, again, uh, as a systems administrator or somebody who is more of a, a you know, a infrastructure type of IT person who have not done coding stuff, of course, in this case, you would need help. You probably will pick up a documentation, open a documentation, and if somebody wants the, their application to be done by you, then, of course, they will give you documentation and you have to follow that. And sometimes a lot of developers help you in this area as well. So on the bottom, you see how I mentioned the zone redundancy, and that's where I talked about like if one like zone is down, then you have other zones available, and that's where it will come into play right there. Next is the database. So it says once database is enabled, uh, a new VNet, which is a virtual net network, and related networking resources will be created automatically. So you can see if I click on create database, that's where it's going to give you the name the engine name the database name you can change these things and we're going to go to next deployment and the rest is so basically whenever it comes to the website you also this is more like a devops kind of stuff now where you also need to know how to connect it to to which type of system you're going to use for deploying a code right so github is very famous microsoft has its own so you need to understand these things because when somebody says i want to move 100 percent to the cloud remember you as a systems administrator or cloud administrator you you have to learn these things at the very basic level if you don't know these things you're going to get stuck somewhere so this is why when we tell people that you need to know the basics of networking you see how the database is there you see how the networking is there you see how the monitoring is there and that's what we tell people that when you start something like this and you have no clue now you're stuck because you don't know networking and nobody's going to start teaching networking inside the cloud they will only cover the basics of cloud networking nothing more than that but you will still get stuck so that's why going back to our transitioning our administration coaching course is very important and that's a reminder for our members who are taking this course so we are not going to enable that for now we're going to basically click on next networking and here you see how it says enable public access so if your website needs to be publicly accessed that link that we have created then you need to enable that so enable network all that stuff is uh, just you know additional stuff right here private endpoint are disabled public access is if private endpoints are disabled if public access is enabled so that's fine we're going to click on next monitoring now this is very important you know whenever you work on applications that needs to be run as a pass you really need to know at least the logs okay you can control the code you can do all a lot of stuff but there could be many things happening in the back end 
that you may not know or not see or not have access. So this is why application insight will give you that sort of logs and that's what it does it monitors and it does a lot of things so you see right here insight is an application performance a apm service for developers and devops professional because they need to understand or diagnose and things like that it's very important to have that enabled the next is tags i'm not going to touch that so we're going to go ahead and create this application and now it's getting created so once it's created, you know you see how the you have a username and password given. Make sure to copy that if you want to play around with it for a little bit. So go ahead and copy this information I just did, and I'm gonna click on create. So just like any other deployment process, you're gonna get this message: deployment and in process. It tells you uh, the stuff right here: input, the template, and sometimes if you're very advanced, you can come to these templates, save it later on use it and change things around add to the library and you see how you can do a lot of things to make it automation or make it really easy if you have to do something at a mass level uh, in in, uh, in uh, cloud administration so once your application is up and running then you can go back to the app services and here you can see that you have the the website or the application that you have created um, is going to run from here so if you click on JSS demo, Let's go ahead and click on that. Now you can see that you have, uh, you can stop that service and this is the default domain. So if I open this domain, you should be able to access that domain. There you go. So it's live right now. And it says your app is running and waiting for your content. And that's where you can then go back and basically start adding the content. That's just like any other web hosting servers that you have been using so far you go out there and you say i want to get this domain and i want to put a wordpress on it and it just runs everything automatically so those that's like the same concept you're just doing this all by yourself right now and not a hosting company is not there anymore you are the hosting company at this point for your own company so the whole point of us making this pass project example is just to show you look you don't have a back-end access meaning this is not a like you know you cannot see a hardware or you cannot touch the hardware you cannot shut down the whole uh server over here it's just an application you can create multiple applications right here and the only access you're going to get is this what they provide you and through the cli as well so you can come over here and kind of play around with the networking now so if you come click on here you see how you have certain networking options right here you can scale scale up things meaning sometimes what happens is that when there's a uh, let's say thousands of people uh, access a website and then you're like okay my website is slow you will basically use some scaling services to make sure you give it more resources yes it's going to give you it's going to get more charges and everything but that's how you scale things um, it gives you almost everything that you have been doing inside a real IIS server or Apache and you have to go and do logging, configuration, getting into the, the you know, it's a CLI. So if you click on advanced collections right here, you have SSH right here. So you, you, can, you can come over here and play around with these things. But again, this is not about app services training at this point this is just to show you the example so so after this you're free to play around with this just to get an idea this is how pass uh you know works um so we're gonna go ahead and come back over here and go to the overview and we'll stop this and say stop and if you come back here you see that it stopped now and this is exactly how things works inside uh, uh, cloud application where things are not working it's just going to give you an error that error means either your web, web application is having an issue or maybe it has some sort of attack or some sort of uh, errors going on and that is where then you come back to the logging services once it's enabled um, and basically that's where you're going to come back and kind of play around with um, that sort of uh, you know features so there are many other examples when it comes to pass. Another example would be coming over to the home page and click on function app. I just created one right here. So when you click on it, you see how this is a little different than the app services where you can use, let's say, containers and uh, code right from uh, the portal. So, for example, you can open it. Once, once it's running, you see on the left side, almost all of these features are, are identical application side. All these features will come with every single application in, in uh, cloud, wherever they have, uh, you know, logging capabilities. You probably will see many of these applications repeated in, uh, in, in different uh, set of features in Microsoft Cloud. But 
each application when you click on it right in right on the the menu area that's where it shows its differences so in app services you could go in and connect it to github and all that kind of stuff here you can actually when you come to the functions you can click create in azure portal which you can actually right inside that specific application you open it and you start cha doing changes to the code so here it says developed in portal so if i click on develop in portal it's going to ask me what do you want to do next i'm going to say okay i want to do http trigger click next create so then i can come over here to the code plus test and click on that and you can see i can actually change the python code right from here and test and run it and get the function urls and all the logs in one uh, portal very powerful stuff and that is for again for somebody who is doing development or devops stuff uh working with uh people that um, you're going to be heavily involved in doing this sort of stuff then you're going to have to go back and learn the devops type of learning some of the coding learning how to work with python especially uh, how to work with php how to work with other applications so that's something that you may be considering later after when you learn about the cloud administration at this point your focus is to be just knowing how to create this application give somebody else an access or uh, give somebody at least know some uh, enough so you can uh, do the drive meaning like if they tell you to put this code inside the code and test it you got to copy the code you put it right here somehow whichever method you're preferring you just need to know how to kind of move around it because you're the admin and in some companies you may not give access to other people to do what they're good at because maybe security reasons or whatever the reason is but this is what a normal sysadmin will do if they don't have devops experience and the company is not requiring that they may also hire somebody in the devops and they'll say you know what just give this access to them and you go back and and to the application uh, part of it and then basically you start giving access which is access control right here so then you you kind of have to understand these left side features more as an administrator than you doing an actual uh, creating application remember that a big companies they will never make one uh, admin for everything like you're not a devops you're you're not a coding person uh, you're not a cybersecurity analyst you're not going to put everything in just one bucket and say okay you there you go we are going to pay you hundred thousand dollars and you just do that and in real companies every single person every single of things that i just discussed like devops cybersecurity administration they hire a person with that sort of salary separately that's how it works in the us canada australia and other big markets but do know that in it anything can happen so keep your mind open to this so learning is always a good thing do not over stress yourself when it comes to this stuff so with this we are done with just explaining what passes i feel like you got an idea if not, like I said, you as an IT professional should go outside and then do the Google search more, use ChatGPT, YouTube videos, and get this idea cleared and then move on to the next section.